All right, Teresa, we will not be cooking with white vinegar today here in the kitchen, unfortunately, but uh, whether it's your choice to eat gluten-free or it's a medical necessity, there are so many options nowadays. And uh, here joining me in the kitchen is Chef Rob. How you doing, Rob? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for uh, for joining us today. And, and this is interesting because uh, being gluten-free, it, it seems like over the past five years or so, ha has really increased here in America. Can you tell us a little bit about why that's maybe happened? I can. I think it, a lot of it has to do with better diagnosis. I think doctors today, when when patients come in and they say, you know, I have all these symptoms, this and that, they're not afraid to test for it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of it. You know, I think another thing is people don't realize there is the Hollywood part of the gluten-free diet, okay. but people What's don't realize that? that's a fad diet. That's people, I'm going on the gluten-free diet for just weight because, loss, just like because. Be okay. But those who require it, it's medical necessity. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's no pill, there's no cure. The only cure really is uh, stick to a gluten-free diet for the rest of your life. And and some people think when when they're diagnosed, I, I have a few friends who are who are uh, diagnosed with celiac. You know, they, they kind of take it lightly and say, oh, I'll have this piece of bread or whatnot. But it, it it's pretty serious. You and dangerous. don't understand the damage it could be doing to your body. I mean, there, there's cases where it could eventually lead to things like stomach cancer and things mm -hmm. like that. So the best thing to do strict adherence to the diet, live a healthy life, live a long life. All right, so make sure you're on that strict that's diet it. there at that's home. That's it, don't forget. Know, don't get off that diet. Um, and, and today we're going to be cooking something that's gluten-free and very tasty. So that's one of the big things is that we can still eat and, and have fun in cooking. And exactly. Like today, this is something that, you know, is normally made with wheat flour. And it's called pizzelles, which is mm -hmm. an Italian wafer cookie. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a gluten-free version. Okay. Okay, and how we're going to do that, we're going to turn them into some beautiful cannolis that we have there. This is sorghum flour. Now, okay. now, what specifically is sorghum? Sorghum is actually a seed okay. that's ground up, and I'm going to have you, you. you whisk this. I put a Whiskey. little bit of potato starch in there and a little bit of tapioca flour, which is actually cassava flour, which is from the root of a plant. So, so tapioca flour, is that what makes the tapioca pudding type of thing? or is it? It's, it, it's the same thing, exactly. Oh, okay, just okay. Sure. sugar. A little sugar. And then we're going to put a little bit of baking powder. A little bit of xanthan gum. What xanthan gum is, it's actually a fer fermented corn sugar, and it actually takes the place of gluten. It gives gluten-free products its structure. Okay. A little bit of salt in there. All right. And, and how do you know all this stuff? Because I'm, you, Lots your, of experimenting. Family, yeah. yeah, when my wife was diagnosed in the year 2000, and again, you know, I went to culinary school, we did not learn gluten-free baking. So this was all new for me. Mm -hmm. I had to dive into the kitchen, I had to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I had some good ones. But you know, I'm, I'm sure, well, yeah, well I'm I mean, sure your wife wasn't too happy. I'm sure she's watching at home. But you know, now. today, yeah. you know, my wife, I always remind her every day of how lucky she really is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because I, as I said, I have a few friends at, at home who, who, who have celiac. And you know, it's, it, it's funny, if we go to dinner, They'll, they'll order something that they think is gluten-free when, in fact, you know, they, they still cook with the same utensils or they cook it in the same pan with Exactly, which you can't you can Right, it's, it's still exactly. the same effect. They'll still have a upset stomach or, or whatever could lead so to So what that. I did here is I added a little bit of butter, a little bit of olive oil, touch of anise extract, which is a licorice flavor, and I'm just putting a little bit of water in okay. And Go ahead and mix that up. And what I have here is this is actually a pizzelle maker. Okay. And it's similar to that of a waffle maker. And it's got this these, you cool know, design. flower yeah. patterns on the bottom and things like that. And... I'm just going to spray this with a little bit of food release. That looks great. Now, what you can do is you can do two things. That's perfect. As you can see, what a lot of times what I'll do is I'll make it, I'll put it into a Tupperware, put it in the refrigerator. It can last up to a week. Okay. And then when I have people over, I just break out my Pizzelle maker, and all, you, all it takes is just about a tablespoon of batter. That's, that's it? About, that's all. And you just put it right in the center, oh. and then we just shut this down. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it go for about 30 seconds or so. And you know, what you're going to see is we're going to have a beautiful wafer. It's a, it's a quick cook there. Now, this is our filling. Okay. Okay. Do I need to roll up my sleeves? This is for all this you. One? Just grab that whisk right there. Okay. All right. I'm using ricotta. Okay. okay. Ricotta tends to be wet. Yep. So, what I did was I put it in a cheesecloth mm -hmm. and I twist it and I let it sit overnight and I drain all the water out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's much stiffer. Okay. What we're doing here is a lot of times people will use mascarpone cheese. I'm actually using light cream cheese because what we're doing is we're doing a lighter version of cannoli filling here. Now, why is that? Why is it lighter? Just because it's healthier? It's, just, it's or? got less fat. Okay. Okay. And a little bit of powdered sugar right in there. And again, there's no wheat product in here, right? It's, it's no all, wheat product in there. All gluten-free. And and you also work at, at UConn as a chef. Tell us a little bit about that. You're you're feeding how many students per week? It's, it's we do 185,000 meals a week. 185,000. 185, 185,000. And we have, you know, part of my job as culinary development is actually meeting the dietary needs of students. And we have every dietary need known to man. You know, gluten-free, we've seen a huge increase. We had two students back in 2002, mm -hmm. and we have well over 400 students 400 right now. 400 now with, on with, our gluten-free gluten diet. Gluten-free, wow. And and does your wife make you cook 100? 
185,000 meals a week for her? No. Okay, no. I, actually, I, I just you know, make sure it, Well, the, the funny thing is my wife actually doesn't cook, though, at all. She doesn't? No, no. She just... Come on. What's, she, what's why her would, name? Why would she, though? Angela. Come on, Angela. you got to step it up, girl. A Come nice, a nice Show Irish some love. Girl. Show them some love here. So this is what they look like. And okay. what we're going to do is you want to fold these. Okay? So just do exactly what I do. And you want to fold them quick. So, so you have this... So fold them in half? Just fold them right up in a tube. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Just like so. See that? And what happens is, much better than I am, yeah. then you put the seam on the bottom, and as it actually cools, it holds its shape. Okay. All right, well, that's, that's, oh. that's close. Yeah, that's I mean, that's yeah, not yeah, bad. Yeah. I mean, this was your first time ever. Need a little work. All right, so what I'm going to do here is we're actually going to fill these, okay? So I'm going to put a little bit of the filling right in a pastry bag here. Now, if you didn't have a pastry bag, you could actually just use a Ziploc bag. Really? Yeah, just pull out a Ziploc bag, put it in there, seal it, and then just cut the corner of it. Oh, okay, and then, you okay just and then you just squeeze it right down, it okay? Okay, so we have the first one here. That's the first one there. Now this is yours, yeah. which, which looks very nice. We have about one minute left. No, so. this is perfect. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut the bag here. Okay. Okay, now if you had a star tip, you could actually use a star tip. Okay, but we're just going to cut the bag, and then we're just going to fill it. And you just squirt it in one side and squirt it right in the other side. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is you get to pick from different toppings. Oh boy. So I have over here, we have some chocolate shavings. Yeah. We have some rainbow sprinkles. Oh, definitely This rainbow. is a little bit of candied orange zest. I actually huh. took the zest from oranges I, I, and candied I just dip it. it right in? Just or? dip it right okay. in, chocolate sprinkles. And this is something great you can do with kids. You know, my kids love it when we make cannolis. It's yeah. very interactive. Here, you wanna try? That's all you. Oh, it's me? That's okay. all you, Thank go you. ahead. I'll, I'll save some for you, Teresa, hold on. Mm. Really and what's good. nice is it's a lot oh. lighter than let's say a cannoli shell. So you actually taste the flavor of the filling much more. And then whatever's left in the bag, you can just, you know, have fun with yeah, it. Yeah, just for fun. I line that's, up my boys. That's for the kids. 10 year old, seven year old, <laughs> you know, I just go to town with it. It's a lot of fun. Very good, all right, thank you so much, Chef Rob. Hopefully we can have you on again soon. And uh, of course your, your book is out, Gluten-Free Baking, so make sure you guys grab one of those and come